Right, well, hello, everybody. Back, uh, Ben. Final session of the day. Uh, I know. Who's with I us? I know. It's um, yeah. It's pretty pretty exciting. We we left the uh, the best till last, as it were. Um, <laughs> so I'm really uh, really excited to um, have everybody here. So we're we're joined uh, by the uh, the HRX team. Um, so that's uh, Callum McDougall. Um, we've got Ago Albagino. And we've got Michael Crease as well, the uh, touring car driver, or Creasy, whatever, whatever you prefer. Um, <laughs> that's some trophy you... there, isn't it, by the way. Look no, at I'm that. Look at that. Say, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty big. We'll, we'll come back. We'll come back to that in a minute. That bit of the elephant in the room till then. But uh, um, I guess, um, Ago, we'll kick off with you. Um, you're you're a racer yourself, so you you've raced for for many years. Tell tell us about what you've been up to. Is that Ego? Ah, yeah, okay. Ego. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah. No, no, I, I, I think I'm the oldest in the, in the group. So I started very, very young and early to, to race in Italy. Uh, with, uh, I, I live in an area where we don't have racetrack. So I started with Dorelli. But after a few years, I went in the Renault Cup. And then uh, I continue all my life to, to race for, uh, as I can say, for fun. Uh, I was, uh, in, even if I, when I was quite old, I was uh, involved in uh, f uh, Fun Cup in uh, the latest, uh, in 2007, I won the Italian Championship. And then uh, I won the GT4. I was the first uh, to bring the Ginetta GT4 in Italy. And in 2010, uh, I won the Championship uh, because I was knowing Lawrence very well, because I spent many, many times uh, to work uh, on the car, I supply many, many items in that period, not with HRX, but uh, when, where I was working in that time. I, I did, uh, I don't know, 10 times, uh, 24 hours of Fun Cup, and I enjoy with endurance, and uh, so I enjoy myself. And luckily, I have no more time now, but I think uh, we are spending, all, all of us, I we are spending very well our time to grow with HRX, is, uh, as I can say, our challenge, you know, our daily yeah. challenge and uh, we like uh, we like this they are i'm very i'm very happy that um, as i can say i did uh, uh, in my life uh, something that is very connected to my passion so from uh, from the, the 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 20s when i was not the 20s when i was 20 years old i was always involved in uh, in motorsport so i think uh, i was uh, i was and i'm uh, very very lucky yeah definitely so so what made you start start hrx and where did that all come from we are live or not? <laughs> yes, yeah, we're live. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a meaning. It doesn't matter how, as I can say, if people like or not, but there is a meaning, and this I think is a very important thing. Uh, so, um, as I was telling before, when I was, uh, uh, I started to, to race when I was young, but I have uh, like a break for ten years. I uh, was dedicated to the business. And then when I was back in 96, uh, uh, I tried to, to create uh, like a team or like uh, uh, we call Scuderia in Italy. You know, that is a place that uh, uh, connected a lot of drivers doing different uh, uh, type of racing. But it's like a place where different people involved in motorsport can find and we can help each other to make races and grow. And so I tried to find something that was... Uh, uh, giving a reason to my comeback and to maybe the comeback of uh, other people. And uh, uh, I called the, the team Happy Racer. But uh, in, in Italy, sound very well. Uh, in Italian, sound very well. Uh, if you see you know, so Hamilton, when wins anyway, say, I'm happy. So the meaning was coming from, uh, from that reason. And the very beginning was, uh, the meaning was, uh, uh, I'm very happy to come back to race and... Uh, at the end, I, I was. Uh, we are very happy to come back to win. So this is the reason of uh, of uh, where the name HRX is uh, stand for. Uh, HR and the X. The X. Uh, I was. Uh, I had a, a customer in France that was doing ca the car with special prototype. And the company was X Extreme, starting with X. And I put together, and uh, as I can say was sounding well and uh, with, I decided to go on in this way. So I was remembering my time before on racing and the X means uh, the future. No? could be extreme, could be exciting, could be everything that is very connected to 
motorsport, but much more with the life that we are doing because uh, I feel uh, HRX uh, a company and, and a, a daily uh, activity that is very close to a racing team, to the to the driver activity because uh, you know every day we following the races you are always uh, moving very very fast so we live an exciting uh, let me say for 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 what i can say exciting exciting to develop exciting to to live days like today that we are uh, all together people involved in motorsport with uh, michael that won uh, won uh, the trophy and so you know this is the the mini of hrx yeah, definitely. Well, look, well, appreciate appreciate let, let us in on that. And uh, Callum, over to you because you've um, you're the uh, HRX UK representative, so a lot of people will be familiar with you. Um, uh, probably more so, seeing you pretty much dominate in the Enduro KA Championship. Uh, so you know, tell us you're you're a racer yourself. Uh, well, I like to think I am. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I dominating. I'm not sure that's that's quite the word. We had a good year last year. Um, you know, we we got away with something like five of the seven events that we entered. We've had a, we've had a slightly harder year of it this year. The competition's definitely stepped up, but, uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy throwing a car around a race circuit and I have been known to be a little competitive at times. No, I, can, I can imagine. Well, uh, tell us, tell us about the custom builder. I mean, we've, we've run, we've run our competition, which we'll go through uh, shortly, which I'm sure everyone was eager to know to see if they won the suit, but talk us through the custom builder and, and how that can work, help, uh, drivers find their next race suit. Great, yeah. So, so uh, as Agos told you, so obviously he started HRX a, a number of years ago, and he's done a fantastic job of, uh, of dominating the international endurance racing scene market, and you know, with a lot of professional drivers all over the world. What we hadn't so much taken advantage of, or or, or catered for, were your your club races. You know, me and and Ago, although I suspect he's a bit better than me, and Michael, obviously, much better, but. Um, we, we wanted to create a way for all us average racers out there to be able to have your own image, have your own race suit, um, which I think for the large extent was uh, something that nobody really thought was, was possible until, uh, until this came along, or not certainly without a very large budget. So we built an online system where you can literally create your own race suit. The, the, there are uh, 10 different designs available at the moment. And each one of those has four color zones. So I think the combination of which there are just over a million different suit variations that you can produce. So you're very unlikely to be standing next to somebody else who's designed exactly the same suit as you. Um, but but that was the idea of it. And um, you know, thank you very much to, to the guys at Motorsport Days for holding the competition for us. As as uh, as you're all probably aware, we're giving away a free suit. To our free custom zero suit, which is our top end professional grade, which Michael will be able to tell you about because he's been racing in it all season long. Um, to a lucky winner, just for having a having a go and designing a suit and putting it up there for the world to see. Yeah, definitely. Well, before we we touch on that again, um, talk us about the new homologation rules that are coming in. A lot of people might not quite be aware of what's going on. Yeah, that's right. So, so there are a new set of FIA uh, suit homologations out. Um, they are the 8856-2018 rules. Um, so don't panic anybody. Your race suit's not about to become invalid if you've got one already. Um, next year, it's going to be mandatory in Formula One, Formula E, World Endurance Championship, Extreme E, all the, all the big stuff. Um, so I believe even touring cars will have current suits for next year, but I'm no doubt they'll change shortly afterwards. Um, what it effectively means is that the suits are all going to become safer, so that they all have to last longer uh, in in a fire, and um, as a result, they are likely to all get a little bit heavier. But you know, Ago and his team in Italy have done a fantastic job of uh, creating a new range of products that, if anything, are a step forward in terms of their breathability and lightness, despite meeting the new regulations for uh, for even safer suits. Um, so every suit that we produce now that comes through our configurator, we are making to the new homologation. So it's safer than anything else that you might buy that's already been made and is on a shelf somewhere. Um, more, more important th uh, factor for all us club racers out there is that uh, any suit that currently exists on the old homologation will no longer be valid from the start of 2028. Sounds like a long way away, seven years. 
I know most people will probably change suits within a seven year period, but there are certainly a lot of us out there that will make them go as long as possible. I know my father's one of those people uh, <laughs> as a Scottish accountant, he'll get the most he possibly can out of uh, anything that he owns. Um, where the new homologation suits will be valid for a full 10 years from the point of manufacture. So, uh, so buying a new suit now, or buying one of our new suits now, you will get a full lifespan out of it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I can I can certainly vouch for them uh, myself because I've got one just over my shoulder here. But you know, let's let's talk to the man of the moment, uh, Michael Crease. Um, oh, yeah. Bit a bit, bit of a trophy there. Then she had a, a good uh, uh, Jack Sears trophy, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, it hasn't left my side pretty much, <laughs> uh, pretty much all week, but it's. Uh, it's an incredible trophy, and uh, I'm just so glad I got my name on, uh, name on it with you know with with all the greats on there so far. So it's it's it's, it's a great great feeling. Well, that's definitely a testament to your to your driving, but but also how is it having you know you've got some real tough competition with your uh, your teammates. What's what's that like? Are they, are they do they help you quite a bit or? Yeah, it's been a real good uh, good thing for me. I mean, when we when we signed the deal up at Autosport last year, I mean, I didn't have I, I had a deal with Vauxhall all the way up till um, New Year's Eve, and it fell through on New Year's Eve. So I was without a drive um, going into the new year, and I put on social media a post, and and I had Motorbase and BTC come, and we we pretty much done the deal. We, we chose to go with BTC Racing, and. Uh, but when I when I signed the deal, I I didn't even think about my teammates at the time, and uh, it wasn't until I sat down and after come, coming back from Whitesport, I thought actually I've got a race against Tom Hill <laughs> and Josh Cook, <laughs> which was a bit of a, a bit of a shock really when I actually thought about it. But um, they've been fantastic. I mean, Tom Chilton has raced you know in the worlds and and, yep. and brilliant British touring car for many years, and uh, he's very very experienced. But Josh Cook is just lit he's just uh you know what he can do in a race car is pretty much unbelievable and he's been coaching me all year um brought me on to that next level and uh probably safe to say now i'll probably turn from amateur to a, a, a pro this year with with his help yeah fantastic well that's well that, well that certainly is great to hear um i know you've got quite a good fan base um so but this year you obviously haven't been able to bring them to any race what, what's it been like racing without the fans it's it's I mean, I've been asked that question a million times this year, and for me, it's been really, really weird. I mean, I came into touring car last year was my first year, and uh, you know, I, I got a twelfth from twenty seventh for the first race at Brands Hatch, and uh, I, I celebrated like I won the championship, and um, and uh, you know, it was just amazing that I was even in touring car, but to go and do it and then celebrate with the fans, they, they just uh, they just really relate to me, and uh, I'm just a normal guy, you know, I'm a normal plumber. Uh, from from uh, Thanet and um, basically I hit the scene and we and we've just gone from strength to strength from there and uh, the fans have been great but you know going out the first race this year with no fans it just felt like a test session and you know winning the championship was really weird. we had a few mechanics there clapping and uh, and that was about it but um, I, I've been very active on social media all year. I've, you know, worked with all my partners, with HRX and, and everyone, and we've all been doing stuff to try and make the crowd more more and more attached to our season. And uh, with BTC Racing and Steve Dubman, he's invested a lot of money this year in uh, BTC Racing Line. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's uh, nice. basically all behind the scenes and good interviews and in-depth interviews. And just when we get out of the car, you know, they're on us and you get a real feel for the weekend through the BTC Racing Line. So, it's been really, really good uh, connecting with the fans that way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, let, I have to ask about the suit as well. So, you know, talk us uh, talk us through. You know, when when you're racing, it's uh, you know, I know from you know for myself, it you know, it's it's, all, it's very much bespoke design and and everything else, isn't it? Well, it's funny because obviously when uh, I was racing in uh, Ginetta G40s in my first year and then G55s. Uh, I used to go out and try and like ring round and so right, I quite like that suit and I had to pay a fortune for different suits all the time and mm. and uh when I when I went to touring car, everyone sort of goes to the auto sports show to try and do deals with each other and, and, and that's where a good platform to and that's where I first ever met Ago and uh he Yes you know, me and him <laughs> me and him just clicked soon as soon as we started speaking he loved my personality obviously i just won the Jeanette, uh gt4 which um you know i got as a very special place in his heart as well with Jeanetta and 
And uh, me and him just hit it off, and he said, "Do you know what? Um, like, I'm going to put my my support into you. I reckon, you know, you can do it." And and he did, and uh, you know, straight away we went out there. The suit was amazingly, you know, for me, it was the first ever time I've had a suit that's, you know, made to measure and fitted. And I, I sort of went through the process. It was, and then when it turned up, it was. Uh, it was amazing because it's it's not it's the lightweight. I mean, obviously with us, every kilo matters, and we have yeah. to be dead on. Car and driver has to be. And I'm I'm a little bit bigger than Jay Kill, say, or someone like that. <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so every kilo matters to us, and uh, it just makes my life a little bit easier. But it's so, you know, when I first got in a touring car in my old suit when I was testing. Um, I got out and I was hot and I was flustered and, and even the underwear, the underwear was quite heavy um, and stuff. And then when I put the HRX stuff on, it just felt like I got out and it feel, feels like you've got nothing on, just a, you know, just a normal lightweight T-shirt and it's really breathable and, and it just keeps you so, so cool and in the car because them cars get up to, I think, uh, 69 degrees Fahrenheit in on the ECU it clocks. So that's about 110 degrees in your oven. Um wow. So, you know, at one point this year, you remember back when it was really red hot at Brands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it does get very hot, so it's very important you have a cool, lightweight suit um, in, in the car. Fantastic. Well, well, certainly all, all good to hear. Well, look, you, uh, you obviously, you're here for another reason as well to uh, choose the winner of our competition. Um, so we've we've managed to pick four people at random. If we uh, can show the the image of the of the four suits that have been. Uh, have been chosen and uh, so Michael I guess it's over to you to to have a look and and, and make a a choice of which which person do you think has has won oh <laughs> big choice <laughs> no pressure <laughs> I'm I quite like all of, all of them really I mean uh, yeah I quite I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kev I think because I know in, how important it is to have black and white, but the black bit's all in the right bit on that suit. So, you you, you know, that you can keep that suit for many years purely for the fact that uh, it's not going to get too dirty and stuff. So, Kev Straw, I think, uh, is going to be our winner. Well done, Kev. Fantastic news. Well, thank you very much for uh, for, for choosing there. Some, and to be honest, it's been some great um, great kit that people have put in there and, and also the begging stories and everything else. But, you know, to anyone else that um, unfortunately didn't get the suit this time, you know, absolutely go and check out HRX. And, um, you know, you, you can see these guys are, the, are professionals and, and it's worn by professionals. Um, so thank you very much, guys, for, for being our guests on the show um, and also being part of... Um, you know, most sport days live in previous years and everything else. But unless you guys have got anything else to say at all. I, I, yeah, just, well, want to, I just want to touch with Ago for, uh, you know, congratulating him on, uh, you know, me, uh, Ash Sutton winning the independence and the, and the driver's title. So uh, HRX have pretty much cleaned up uh, in British touring car this year, for sure. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what I can say uh, is that uh, we live like uh, we... We, we are racing, so we live really all the company and I think all uh, the atmosphere we have here, we are always, even if this year was not possible to come in England, but we live the races, we live uh, our driver. I, I'm very happy that uh, uh, Michael remember when we met at the, the Autosport show because uh, uh, it was really in incredible, no? Uh, yeah. And another and thing... I no one forgets before, meeting you. Sorry? <laughs> No one forgets meeting you, Ago. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no, what I, what I can say also is to thank uh, to Ben because uh, I think Ben uh, don't give up. I mean, uh, this is very important because uh, these two days for all our uh, world is very, very important. Uh, and uh, to be here anyway, instead of what's happening outside or everywhere is very, very important. I think uh, we can take you only and uh thank you. a lot it's very very we appreciate a lot really thank you thank thank you very much and also thank you to the my supercar boys for for helping to manage to put it on because otherwise it would just be a zoom video for everyone to join in so this, <laughs> this, this, this is a bit better but um, look, thank you very much for, for being part of it um we'll, we'll let you get on sorry callum did you want to say something? Yeah, so just one last thing just just again yeah thank you everybody for entering the competition i can see loads of people have been on the website and playing with it so that's really great stuff Keep your eyes open for Black Friday deals, which will be on next Friday. 
What what a legend, eh, Callum? Hey, hey, man. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Really, really appreciate it, and we wish you all the best uh, next year, uh, Michael as well, and and also yeah. the, the boys HRX. So thanks a lot, guys. Ciao, everybody. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Oh, Cheers. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.
Performance Box Touch is not only a super accurate performance meter, it can also be used as a sophisticated predictive lap time, using GPS rather than distance to allow you to accurately compare how your current lap time compares with your fastest, corner by corner. Quick and easy to install, it automatically identifies the circuit you are driving on and loads the relevant track maps from our extensive database. Using a performance box for the first time, VW Classic Championship racer, Dan Rose, talks us through how he benefited from the system's bright delta speed LEDs on track. Yeah, a few times you'd go in and basically it would come up green, so you thought, yeah, and then mid-bend it was really sort of you're pushing on a bit, and you'd come out and you were red, so you had to get the balance right of going in and getting the green going in and the green coming out, so you knew that was the best way through there. Using a lap timer mode, Dan was able to monitor how modifications to his car affected his performance on track. Like changing the roll bars, we could see that we're a couple of seconds slower straight away and that certain areas it's not working. Um, and then when you t flick back, it's working and it shows up on the times and also in your sectors. So the predictive lap times really work. Given a quick lesson on the Circuit Tools data analysis software to pinpoint exactly where time is being lost and then going through his data from the day, Dan said, um, looking back at the data now, we're a bit further on in the day. We can see that certain lines worked, certain lines didn't. Um, carrying a bit more speed into the first bend seems to have given us a bit more pace. Um, and also we can look at different sectors where in a couple of uh, laps I was quicker, but actually putting all those sectors together so that they work, um, which we've looked at. And then, yeah, we'll go back out and have another go. But so far we've, we've gained yeah, two or three seconds throughout the day. Um, which has really worked well with us. Um, yeah, so when we come back racing, we should be up there. Hi, Chris Dawes here. I've stepped away from the commentary box for a change and I'm in front of the camera because this time I'm talking about my business, Open Doors Training. Founded by myself as a project of passion because I felt so lucky that I get paid to do the things I do now. Commentating, hosting awards, voiceover artists, TV, radio, podcasts, live shows, you name it, all of those things are an absolute privilege, especially when I came from someone who was paralysed by fear when I had to present at university and when I first went into business after graduating. But thankfully, I got accused of making IT entertaining when I was in my sales and marketing role. I know, not that easy, but I'm proud of that one. And that's what really was the trigger, enabled me to carry on with all the different things I do now. I want to now help others open doors that they may not yet know exist. And you never will know exist unless you put yourself in a position where you can be heard. Whether that's in business, in public sector, in sport, all of it is the same. If you're silent, no one will know you exist and how good you are at things. You've got to put yourself in a position where you open those doors, at least that, so that you can knock on the doors and they know you are there. So that is what we do here at Open Doors Training. It's not about creating blueprints of presenters or media darlings or whatever it may be. It's about unlocking you. Instead of contain, being the contained version of you, we want to get 110% of you. You probably exaggerate it by 10%. I'm sure I'm not like this when I'm at home on the sofa. The wife would kill me. But it is about still being you. And that is what we work on within all of our training. So come on over, opendoorstraining.co.uk. Let's have a conversation to see how we may be able to assist you going into hopefully a better year in 2021. So my name's Tom Ingram, I'm competing in the British Touring Car Championship with Team Toyota GB. So the BTCC is one of the toughest championships around. There's so many quick drivers, so to get the edge you've got to be looking for any little millisecond of improvement. So whether that be from training hard at the gym or having the best kit around, you've got to find the edge any way possible. So the thing I love about the Wallero products the most is the temperature regulation and not only does it regulate my temperature and keep me cool when it's really hot but when we're testing in the middle of winter it keeps me warm as well the feel of these is amazing they're so soft you know you could wear this to bed and be more than happy 
So the lower under has really helped my performance and reduced the effects of the heat on my body and the heat fatigue that I'm finding. That's where I'm finding a big improvement. So over the course of a, it doesn't matter if I'm testing, it doesn't matter if I'm racing, I'm just not feeling quite as fatigued as I would have been without it.